Hello once again, Elevate Truth TV, and this time I'm going to be tackling a touchy subject for some people, but it is called the media destruction of the black woman. And the reason why I wanted to go into this topic is because of um, the fact that the black woman has become a kind of symbolic image for all women. The body shape um, and also the attitude of the black woman, the feisty, strong black woman. And I would like to go into this a little bit deeper and to show you that the image of the black woman that has been used as the blueprint for the modern woman is actually a degraded image of the black woman. And that the image that we are seeing is being hoisted on the masses as the definition of the black woman, but it is actually a animalistic degraded form of a woman. Now, I would like to first say that it, this has happened with many musical artists because music is one of the most powerful mediums to affect the conscious mind and the subconscious mind and to affect the people's behavior and to put a blueprint into the minds of people of how to act. So we have, you know, the kind of bad bitch attitude, the kind of um, so-called strong woman. And I'd like to just look at, because I'm going to focus on one video in particular, um, because I think it, it struck a note with many people and it got a lot of a backlash because of this video. The video is called WAP and it had, um, it was a Cardi B track featuring Megan Thee Stallion, the woman with a male horse's name, Megan Thee Stallion. Um, caused a lot of controversy because of its um, depiction of sexuality and also the way it was deemed within the media and what effects it would have on, on the younger women in society, children also. So the backlash caused a article here and this article was saying that society didn't like the image of strong women, basically powerful women and powerful sexuality coming from women. That's what it was saying. Now, I don't think there's anything wrong with portraying sexuality because we all have a sexual element to us. But there's a difference between sexuality and objectifying a woman. So first of all, I'd like to go to the video itself. Let's take a look. So we have the two individuals um, placed against a Masonic Ford. The symbolism in the video is um, very, very colourful. Something that would appeal to um, younger people the colourfulness of the video, but we also have these animals that appear to be engaged in sexuality through different doors and so forth. And the symbol of the snake is also prevalent. Now anybody in terms of biblical terms would no recognise the snake from the seduction of Eve in the Garden of Eden. We also have this kind of MK Ultra aspect where the women are kind of being programmed in this kind of animalistic way. It's the sex kitten, so to speak. The song itself talks about there being hoes or whores in the house, certified freaks and so forth. And it is also very, very much talking about sexuality controlling men being dominant over men, not having any union with a man, but having some kind of control, using your sexuality to basically pay, you know, somebody would have to pay your bills or pay your, you know, tuition or something like this. I didn't go too deeply into the lyrics because I understood that, you know, even me watching these kind of things, I didn't want to spend too much time on watching it, but I wanted to break down some of the symbolism that's being used. People can look into man, um, MK Ultra and Mind Control and how it has been used in the music industry, the entertainment industry and so forth and also what people have to do in order to get to these higher echelons in music. But speaking about the fact that the idea of a whore 
being something to be proud of, something that is um, sexually empowering is interesting because many people, many women have had to go into those industries because of um, being in a lesser place in society. But these, these women are supposed to be at the top of their industry. So they're not um, in one way being, using their bodies and selling their bodies um, to pay the rent or to feed a family. But they are selling and objectifying themselves in a way to portray an image to the masses. And this image has been taken on by people like this, Kim Kardashian. Now this body image that Kim Kardashian has put a lot of money into creating is the same kind of body image that back in slavery, black women, if we look at this picture, would have been paraded around, mocked and looked at as animals. And this is well documented for anybody that wants to go into it and look at deeper into the origins of this. You know, black women used to be um, degraded about the size of their lips and women these days are pumping collagen into their lips. People are getting Brazilian butt lifts to get this kind of shape, this thickness, so to speak. So the very thing that used to be used to degrade the black woman has now become the thing that many other women are using as a kind of badge of honour to say I am woman. We only have to look at stuff like this, TikTok. Now as we can see we have a generation of young women that believe that parading themselves for attention on one of the world's most famous apps and most popular apps is the way forward in terms of gaining popularity on one level but also could I say gaining some kind of self-respect because you are degrading yourself in order to gain popularity it's an interesting phenomenon and the thing is as well to do with the body images that are being portrayed the shapes of the bodies the um, the way people are the way young women are showing themselves is very interesting and I would say you're chaining yourself to an agenda um, that isn't yours, wasn't created by you, and you're fulfilling an agenda by who? Because if we go back to Megan Thee Stallion and, and Cardi B, who actually owns the record companies? And because it is the media, where have black women actually come from to find this place in the media. I'm going to go back now, way back, to a woman called Ida B. Wells, who fought for the modern day black woman to be in the position that she is in. Let's take a little look. At the age of 16, Ida lost both of her parents and her infant brother in 1878 due to the yellow fever epidemic. Wells moved with some of the siblings to Memphis, Tennessee, where she found better pay as a teacher Soon she co-owned and wrote for the Memphis Free Speech and Headlight newspaper. In the 1890s, Wells documented lynching in the United States through her indictment called Southern Horror's Lynch Laws in all of its phases. Investigating frequent claims of whites that lynchings were reserved for black criminals only, Wells exposed lynching as a barbaric practice of whites in the South used to intimidate and oppress African Americans who created economic and political competition. In a subsequent threat of loss of power for whites, a white mob destroyed her newspaper office and presses as her investigative reporting was carried nationally in Black-owned newspapers. After being forced to leave Memphis because of the 1892 expose, she wrote about a lynching. Ida B. Wells starts the Alpha Suffrage Club in Chicago, one of the first and most influential African-American suffrage groups in Illinois. The group immediately sets out to mobilize and register black men and women voters. I spoke about Ida B. Wells because this is a woman who way back in the day was involved in the media and also fought in the civil rights movement, uh, talked about the 
the the kind of horrific things that happened were, that were happening to black people and documented it. This is a forgotten woman, and it would be interesting to find out what a person like this would make of what is happening to the black woman and how she's being portrayed in the media today, and how some black women are actually pushing forward this agenda, and then how other women are taking on this, this phenomenon and running with it, taking on this identity and running with it. I want to also focus on what this black woman has to say in terms of black women's place in the civil rights movement. Let's have a look. There wasn't um, even stated very many men who embraced what we now would call feminism. I mean, we women had to fight for our place and we almost didn't do it based on, I guess you would say feminist principles, but based on, hey, we do the work, we go to jail, we get beaten. We're doing the same thing you do. So we have as much right to determine the direction of this movement as you do. That man over there says that women need to be helped into carriages and lifted over ditches and given the best place wherever. Nobody helps me into carriages nor over the muddy patches or gives me any best place. And ain't I a woman? Look at me. I have plowed and planted and gathered into barns and no man could best me ever. Ain't I a woman? So this woman here, this black woman was talking about not only fighting for the general civil rights cause, but also fighting for their place within the civil rights movement itself. What would this woman think of what they fought for and where it's come to? And who are the new icons of femininity? Now, she also said that feminism wasn't really the driving force for, or the ideology of feminism wasn't the driving force for what drove those women. Because those women are fighting for their place within a wider context. So they were fighting for the same thing the men were fighting for. So there was some kind of unity, but there's also some kind of division that they had to say, we are equal to you in this struggle. Are men and women now equal in the struggle? Or is there any struggle? Or have we become so dumbed down that we don't care about people's identity, people's self-respect? You know, because I've got a little girl, and that's why I'm making this video in a sense, because I know my little girl will be coming up into a world where the idea now for women is to objectify themselves under the guise of empowering themselves. Now, obviously, it might feel powerful if um, a lot of so-called men are watching you as you objectify yourself and you can monetize that, you know, in some way. But to what end? That's what I'd like you to think about. Now I'm also gonna end this video now, short video. It's only been a short one. I'm gonna end this with a woman talking to other women. Because everybody who's listening to this speech, I think would have an opinion about where certain women are taking society and where certain women are allowing the powers that be within this society to take them. So let's sign out with this clip. Take care until my next episode. We black women have been called many things. Foxes, matriarchs, sapphires, sisters, and recently, queens. 
I would say that black women have been a combination of all them words, cause if we examine our past history at one time or another, we've had to be like them words be saying. But today, there are some words we can discard. There be some we must discard for our own survival, for our own sanity. In this insane, messed up, die-conscious, pill-taken, masochistic, mis and oriented society gots to be dealt with. Cause that's us, you all hear me, us. Even though we be stepping unqueenly sometimes. Like it ain't easy being a queen in this unrighteous world full of Miss Anns and Mr. Anns. But we steady trying. And as black women, we have to be the inspiration for the nation, for our men. We have to start out into the community educating the children, educating ourselves. Because once we educate ourselves, the children will become educated because we, we are the ones that teach the children. We are the ones that decorate the homes. We are the ones that are with both female and male children. We are the ones that the children look to as the image in terms of their daily education. So it isn't <coughs> that we don't get our values mixed up and feel that we have to educate the world. We haven't first educated ourselves. Ooh.